This is one of the scopes that I've made in the past. I've made one scope with a time base and this scope lacks a time base. So it's very, very elementary. I can feed in uh, a direct signal to the plates here and here. And on the moment we see the relation between two uh, sine wave voltages. Here's the, the sine wave generator and here is a transformer and I've connected this transformer to the um, horizontal plates so there is no time base in it, no sawtooth generator. The sawtooth generator is normally the time base and um, to fill the lack of that uh, real time base, I use now here on the horizontal line uh, a sine wave generated by the transformer, so on 50 Hz approximately. And we see here now the relation between the 50 Hz sine wave and the sine wave that is generated here in the sine wave generator. And when I change the frequency, from the sine wave generator, you can see that the relation changes, and these are the so called LISA U figures. I'm sure you can find on the internet what the LISA U figures mean. They give the relations between two sine wave frequencies. I want to talk some more about my scope, it's very elemental. But perhaps uh, other people, someone interested in making a scope, uh, can um, get value out of my um, remarks, my advices. The scope here inside is an electron tube. And here you see such an electron tube, scope tube. This scope tube is from Siemens, Germany. It's a modern scope tube, and this scope tube here is from Philips, and it's very obsolete. It's a scope tube from the 50s, approximately, 1950, 1955, approximately. I want to explain more about the how this tube was made, is made later in the video. Back to the circuit here, we have, of course, the power supply, that's here, main transformer, 220 volts, and here we have the bridge rectifier, and here we have the supply capacitors. My advice, use good uh, quality supply capacitors from a high value. I use approximately 4700 microfarad. But you can go even to 10,000 microfarad and you have, don't have to uh, build a um, stabilized power supply in that case. The, the hum on the circuit must be uh, cured very good, smoothened out very good, because when you have some hum in your power supply you will see the horizontal line on the screen dance in a frequency from 50 Hz in Europe. Or 60 Hertz in America. Here you see the uh, high voltage transformer that supplies the tube. You can't hear it, it works on approximately 18 kilohertz or so. There's a high voltage diode here inside. I cannot show it because I have to break up the circuit completely. Here the voltage divider, I hope it's a little bit sharp. Um, I will explain more about this voltage divider and the importance from that voltage divider. And here the inputs, of course. The whole circuit, by the way, is completely shielded. Tin plate on the back. 
thin plate here. The transformer has also a kind of shielding with this copper, this piece of copper here. And the shielding is very necessary because this transformer strays 50 Hz around. It has an electromagnetic field around it. The 16 kHz high voltage transformer strays 16 kHz around it. And when it's not shielded, you will clearly see that on the screen from the scope. Uh, here you see perhaps some disturbances, but they are damped out well by means of the shielding. Next question, how to connect a tube, an oscilloscope tube. I've made a sketch here, and we will compare that to this uh, DG732 uh, tube from Siemens in Germany. Um, the electrodes inside the tube are often called grids in the literature, but they don't look like grids at all. They more look like tubes. You can see that. Four tubes. And inside all these tubes the electron beam moves from the right side to the left side from the cathode to the anode. This is the, the sketch. Here we have the filament. It's heated. It emits, emits electrodes. Electrodes are negative. The anode is positive. So the electro, uh, electrons, sorry, the electrons are uh, attracted by the anode. They fly through the anodes and hit the screen. And when they hit the screen, we have the luminescence effect, and we see a light dot here. But when the electrons travel through the tube, they are deflected by the deflection plates. The electrons are by their nature negative. So when we add here a positive voltage, the beam, the beam of electrodes will be attracted to this part, this electrode. And when for instance this electrode is negative, the electron beam will be repelled. That means that the beam moves this side and the dot on the screen is here. So these are the two deflection plates, horizontal and vertical. These are the horizontal plates, these are the vertical plates. The horizontal plates have the um, slightest distance to the screen. They are not so sensitive and the vertical plates are the sensitive plates. Uh, a few other things that are very good to tell. When you want to um, make such a circuit, it's advised to reverse the diode from your high voltage generator here. And the reason is that when you uh, have here a high positive voltage, the deflection plates will also be on a high positive voltage and you cannot feed in easily uh, the signal that you want to make visible. But when you reverse the diode here, we have a high negative voltage here from say 3000 volts or even 10,000 volts. And the high voltage generator is grounded here, so the positive lead from the high voltage generator is on ground. That means that we can uh, connect the anode to ground. And that's here in this case. For instance, this metal everywhere here, I've connected here the ground, this is ground, and the, uh, the anode from the tube, the electron tube, is connected to ground. Here is positive. But we have the same effect that the uh, electrons that are negative are attracted now by the positive anode connected to ground. Another important thing to tell is this. Uh, the most negative point from the circuit, from the, the tube, must be connected to the brightness cylinder here. The brightness cylinder is also called the Weynet cylinder. And 
by adding here a very negative voltage by means of sorry by means this is the cathode this is the bright the brightness creates the brightness cylinder by adding the most negative voltage here it comes from here we can repel the negative electrons we make this hole in the tube there's really a kind of hole inside this tube where the negative electrons trans come out uh, by adding a negative voltage here to the brightness grid, the most negative voltage, the electrons are repelled and they are shut up in this part of the, of the tube. And that means that the screen is dark, very simple. But when we slowly add a positive voltage here on the brightness grid by means of this potentiometer, the electrons can leave the cathode properly and are attracted by the anode and hit the screen here. There's another uh, important grid here that's a focus grid that's here. We have also here a, um, uh, a potentiometer connected in a voltage divider here and with the focus grid we add a kind of electromagnetic field between these uh, tubes inside the electron tube and that means we can focus if it is an objective if it is a lens uh, if it were light we can focus the electron beam by adding uh, an electrostatic voltage here and that makes that here it is it goes all the way but here in the focus grid it's it's focused, the electron beam is focused so that it is here on the screen a very sharp bright dot. Another thing, important thing to tell, here we have a, um, a voltage divider. Here is the negative point, here is the most positive point. And when you operate, want to operate an, an uh, oscilloscope tube, it's not so very very important that uh, the exactly the right voltages uh, confirm the data sheet are applied to all the grids but that the relations between the grids are right so when you operate the tube on 1000 volts and the data sheet says it has to operate on 2000 volts the relations the voltage relations between the grids here in fact all these tubes must be right and you have you can find find out that expen experimentally by means of this voltage divider and when you insert here in the middle of your voltage divider a potentiometer that's here this potentiometer you can set the whole circuit to work properly and that means that all the right voltages are applied to the different grids. So with this potentiometer you can align the whole circuit that it works properly, both the brightness grid and the focus grid, etc. So that was uh, all there was to tell about this circuit. I have to keep it very elementary. There's a book that I've published on the Lulu website in which I describe this whole circuit uh, much more precise. Again, the horizontal line. This is the uh, vertical amplifier. I'm not sure whether I've published this on YouTube. It goes from 0 Hz to approximately uh, 200 kilohertz, all AC. For a hobbyist, it's very, very difficult to buy DC amplifiers. So it's an easy AC amplifier. This scope, for instance, has DC amplifiers in it. Completely professional, but for a hobbyist, this is a very, very uh, difficult job. I don't spend my time 
because I always measure uh, AC uh, voltages and AC signals. So it's possible to make a scope yourself. And in fact it is not very difficult.